In Washington, the pressure's on, the clock is ticking, the countdown to the so-called fiscal cliff hits the 72-hour mark in just a few minutes. Well, while Congress is hoping for a Hail Mary deal to avoid taking the plunge over the fiscal cliff, most Americans are wondering what is wrong with these people and how exactly it's going to affect them. So we went ahead and crunched the numbers for you. There they were again. Our nation's leaders trooping into the White House one more time. And afterwards, the president. The hour for immediate action is here. It is now. You've heard that before. But today, on the brink of the fiscal cliff, a glimmer of, well, something. I'm optimistic we may still be able to reach an agreement that can pass both houses in time. But don't hold your breath. There is deep skepticism in Washington that the leadership of our country will get its act together on time. So let's say we all go over the cliff. What does it mean for you? How big a deal is this for ordinary taxpayers? Well, it's a big deal in that it would be a kind of a sudden shock if you had a lighter take home pay, uh, right, starting at the beginning of 2013. First, Payroll taxes, the taxes that fund Social Security, they'll go up on everyone, from 4.2% to 6.2% as the recession-related payroll tax holiday expires. Then income taxes will go up across the board, every tax bracket. We're talking about real money for every household. For instance, a single parent with two kids making $37,000 a year, she'll get walloped with a $2,800 plus tax increase. A married couple with a kid in college making about $137,000, that's $8,000 more in taxes on that family. And if you're really rich, say LeBron James rich, $53 million a year, cough up $2.4 million more to Uncle Sam. And that's not all. Two million Americans who lost their jobs are getting help through unemployment benefits. At the stroke of midnight on January 1st, they get stiffed, not a dime more. The federal help for unemployment benefits would go away. And that's real pain for people who are already suffering. Yes, and it's also uh, an immediate uh, removal of economic activity, you know, from the economy, because if you get unemployment benefits, that money gets spent into the economy relatively quickly. And the hits just keep on coming. Capital gains taxes up 5%. The child tax credit cut in half from $1,000 per child to 500. You can't even die without getting nailed. The estate tax goes from 35% on all estates over $5 million to 55% on any estate worth more than $1 million. And all of this adds up to a major blow to the still fragile economy. You have the housing market and auto sales rebounding pretty strongly. You know, the jobs market even has kind of uh, gotten on firmer footing as well. So it looks like the, the economy has been gathering up some strength. And what would this do to it? Create a headwind. It would basically give people another reason not to spend and hire. I mean, it's no way to run a popsicle stand, is it? Doesn't seem like it. <laughs> but in Washington, they just can't seem to get it done, which, given the stakes here, is weird. Outside of Washington, nobody understands how it is that this seems to be a repeat pattern over and over again. Ordinary folks, they do their jobs. They meet deadlines. The notion that our elected leadership can't do the same thing is mind-boggling to them. It needs to stop. We'll believe it when we see it. 